It's only existed for a handful of years, but Samsung's Frame TV has captivated millions. I know because millions of you have watched my two previous reviews of the older models of the Samsung Frame TV. I'm Erin from Tech Gadgets Canada and TechGadgetsInternational.com, and the 2022 Samsung Frame TV is just the third version, as far as I know, of this popular chameleon of a television, and it boasts some improvements and new features. I recently purchased the 65-inch 2022 Samsung The Frame TV for my home, and in this review I'll tell you what it's like to own, how it works, what it can do, and how this new version compares to the previous one, as well as if there are any new features or differences and overall if I can recommend it for you. And really heads up if you end up liking this video and finding it helpful to please hit that like button and consider becoming a subscriber. Both those things do help me keep making more videos that I hope everyone out there can watch, enjoy, and learn from. And finally, if you're looking to read, reference, or share this topic, you can head over to techgadgetscanada.com where you'll find a full write-up. For anyone who may not know, the Frame TV is a high-quality 4K TV that also displays realistic gallery-level artwork on the screen when the TV isn't active. Far from looking like a screensaver or placeholder, the combination of that high-resolution art with the no-glare glass and a light sensor which helps the TV adapt to your room and the time of day means it's better than a CIA agent at hiding in plain sight. So what's new on the 2022 Samsung Frame TV? It's not a revolutionary redesign and it doesn't innovate a lot over the 2021 version, but the changes Samsung has made do go a long way towards improving it. The major innovation is the addition of even more glare-resistant glass and some streamlined software and user experience improvements. I have to admit, I felt a little bit extravagant upgrading from the 2021 The Frame when on the surface it seems that the only really major difference is a piece of coated glass, but I can attest that this new anti-glare low reflection panel technology featuring an embossed matte display makes a shocking amount of difference in how the TV blends in as art in your home. Off to the right, you can see the level of glare in the 2021 frame TV that I had at home. While it was pretty glare resistant, bright light sources did pop from time to time. On the 2022 version, it's even better at deflecting pretty much all ambient light and even directional light like this flashlight beam seems to just scatter when it hits the screen. I'd say that if the earlier versions blocked about 80 or 90% of any glare, then this new 2022 version minimizes about 95 to 98% of it. <laughs> you guys excited about the frame TV? In the box, aside from the TV, you get a remote control, wall mount, and the Samsung One Connect box and cable. The One Connect box links to the TV with a tiny 3 to 4 millimeter wide cable, and it's quite long, meaning you can run it into a cabinet elsewhere since it doesn't need line of sight. I opted to run conduit in the wall and hide the cable so no one could see it. The One Connect box is the place where you'll plug in your cable box, streaming or gaming devices, and your soundbar. I added the Sonos Beam second generation soundbar to my setup for improved audio since the built-in TV speaker, while it's okay, wasn't amazing. You can check out my review of the Beam second generation here on the channel too, by the way. Getting this TV set up is easy, but installing it will take some time. If you're interested in learning more, you can check out my how-to video for the 2021 Samsung Frame TV installation, since the wall mount and the steps are identical to the 2022 version. The wall mount is included in the box, like I said. In my opinion, it is absolutely worth it to install some conduit to hide that One Connect cable inside your wall, particularly since the cable, as thin and clear as it is, is really the only dead giveaway that your art is actually a television. I'm not clear on if the cable on its own is actually rated for being enclosed in a wall, but I do know that Samsung also offers a special wall rated One Connect cable. I'm okay with how we've done our installation here, but I am by no means an authority. Once the TV is installed, you can connect it to Wi-Fi and then you're essentially ready to go. You also need to download the Samsung SmartThings app to access some of the features and settings, things like uploading your own photos as art if you want to do that. The app also allows your phone to be your remote control if you want that too. 
After a particularly buggy year trying to use the previous Samsung SmartThings app version on my Apple iPhone, I am glad to see that Samsung seems to have resolved most of the issues I had talked about in my previous review of the 2021 Frame TV, where the app would simply crash repeatedly when any iPhone user tried to do anything with it. One of the cool add-ons for this product is a magnetic bezel that will change the edge color of the TV. I opted for a white version called Modern White to help it blend into my wall, but there's an array of wood and other options too. I do highly recommend upgrading to one of these additional frames as it does go a long way towards hiding the factory black edge frame that may be a giveaway that your art isn't what it seems to be. The snap-on frames cost about 200 bucks for a set and they come in four pieces which are perfectly sized to fit your TV and they click on or off in seconds. The concept is actually pretty genius and I love the style of my white frame frame TV. Let's dig a little deeper into art mode, which is what distinguishes this TV from all other televisions, even those marketing a gallery mode. When the frame is not displaying 4K video, you can enjoy it in art mode where you get this super high quality, high resolution art or photography. The light in this TV is designed so that when it displays that art, it doesn't glare or brighten. It's just there and it blends into your space really seamlessly so it's actually possible to believe this panel is just a painting hanging on your wall. Plus that new anti-glare coating works wonders. A built-in light sensor adjusts the screen's output constantly so that your art is always visible in its best light. Even with brighter sunlight beaming in and filling the room your art will appear realistic. When evening sets in, the set adapts to display a more dimmed version that still looks like it fits in with the rest of your room with zero bright glare. It might be a bit hard to see, but here you can actually see it adjusting to the ambient light in the room so that it doesn't look out of place. While there is a good amount of free artwork you can display on your frame TV, and you can add your own, it's almost essential to sign up for the Samsung Art Store to open up a wealth of art options for your space. The Art Store costs about $70 Canadian per year. You can choose to display one piece of art at a time, or even have it rotate through a gallery's worth of your personal favorites. Unlike some other competitor TVs, you can also add your own art and photography using the Samsung Smart Things app. And in a major improvement over the previous version of the app, this is now easy to do and works bug free. I added some nature inspired vacation snaps that I took and was proud enough to show off. So what happened to ambient mode on the Samsung Frame TV 2022 edition? Ambient mode, by the way, is just a different type of art screen with moving images and there's more informational options too. Now, initially I thought Samsung had nixed ambient mode since there's no dedicated setting or button for it any longer on the new TV. But after much digging through settings and poking around art mode, I can confirm it's back. To access it, you'll navigate to art mode, then look through the menu options for something called special edition. In here is the new location of different types of moving imagery. Okay, time to get to the TV watching. If you're considering a Samsung Frame TV, the truth is you're probably doing so because you don't want it to look like you have a TV in the room, though you secretly might want to watch TV from time to time. We're good. Thank God. Isn't that so the great thing about this TV is as soon as you fire it up, you've got a great 4K ultra high resolution screen with built-in streaming and it's preloaded with apps including Netflix, YouTube, Prime Video and Apple TV. The 2022 Frame TV comes with multi-view like its predecessor. This version makes some definite improvements to how you interact with this feature, making it a lot easier to navigate. Multi-view lets you watch what's on the frame and your mobile device on the same screen at the same time, or you can show two different HDMI sources or even toss YouTube into the mix. The screen sizes and configurations are a little bit adjustable too. This feature worked really well, though it is a bit weird to get it set up and adjust. You can watch my other video on how to set up and use multi-view right here on the channel. One of my big complaints about the 2021 frame was that if I wanted to listen to music through the TV, there was no way to do it and to keep it in art mode. It just gave you an album cover on screen. But now with the 2022 frame, I'm happy to report that you've got more options for cool ambient music effects. 
You've got to stream from your phone or device for these two options to work, but there's a new option called Music Wall that will show moving graphics. The graphics seem to change at will with no way to customize them. Or look for the option on screen called Listen with Art Mode while you're streaming from your phone, and you can keep the music and use Art Mode too. You can also log in to any of several music streaming services right on the TV, and you'll get album cover art and lyrics if you want a different experience. Overall, I continue to love this TV with pretty much everything I have. Art mode is a constant presence in my home here, and we have fun switching up the artworks each week. Every single guest has been fooled into thinking that the art was legit until we turned on the great quality 4K TV. I'm super happy with the video quality for movie nights, baseball games, and TV binging too. I like the improvements to things like screen mirroring, multi-view, and the new setting that lets you play music while in ambient mode. I think the new anti-glare panel makes a major and noticeable difference if you do currently have a 2021 or older the frame. I also do advocate for getting those special magnetic bezels to really help it blend into your space. Overall, I really have zero major complaints about the 2022 The Frame. I do normally try to suggest at least a couple of things that folks might find as downsides no matter how much I might like a product, but in this case I am straight up head over heels and have nothing really to complain about. Samsung has gone a long way to making this TV more versatile, valuable, and to fix previous problems and to ensure it plays a bit nicer with all phone users. For that reason, I can definitely recommend it if you're looking for your first frame TV or as an upgrade from one of the older models. It is absolutely worth it. The 65 inch 2022, the frame that I bought sells for about 2000 US dollars or 2600 Canadian, and you can get it as I got mine from Amazon. If you want to read this topic or reference any of what I've talked about here, head over to techgadgetscanada.com for a full write-up. There you can ask me any questions you have about the Frame TV. You can, of course, also post them here in comments below. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Erin. Until the next time, you can find me on either Twitter or Instagram. I'm at ErinLYYC. You can also catch me on Facebook at facebook.com slash techgadgetscanada.